In this video I show you how to make this magnificent looking shoe rack using nothing but pallet wood. It cost me absolutely nothing and it's so simple that even I can do it without any mistakes. Uh, okay, there was one, one mistake, just one, but look, my shoes! So it starts with a pile of wood. This is all from broken down pallets, from different pallets, some in good condition, some in not so good condition. I'm checking mine here for nail holes because I'm going to run mine through the planer. If you don't have a planer then you've got a couple of options. You can either sand it by hand or leave it as rough sawn wood. You might just need to throw a stain on it. I should also mention that this amount of wood is actually going to make two of these shoe racks, which is what I've been asked to do. So here I throw that wood through the thickness a few passes on each side, only doing a quarter turn each time just to make sure that I'm not chewing into the wood too much. I'm not looking to get this butter smooth, it's only going to store shoes. It doesn't need to be perfect, no one's eating off this. Anybody that's watched any of my other videos knows that I don't have a jointer. I had a cheap one, it blew up. So the way I get around this is by laying the boards on their edge on a flat surface using some of these clamps to clamp them together and then I run it through the thicknesser that way. It's not perfect but it's more than enough when you're building a shoe rack. In fact I've even done tables using this method. I should also mention that this is my very first commission. Yeah, from the mother-in-law. But if somebody's asked you to make something and then gives you money for it, that's a commission. That's a commission. Anyway, that aside, I haven't got any measurements for this other than a maximum width so that it'll fit where it needs to go. So all I'm doing is taking reference off one of my shoes, which means I'm now stood in a pile of sawdust in just my socks. But I'm getting some rough measurements, figuring out where everything needs to go, and then I will just knock it all together. To avoid this project looking too blocky, and obvious that it was made for free using pallet wood, I thought I'd add a round over to the two vertical pieces that actually hold everything together, just rounding over the top so that it doesn't quite look as square and blocky. I'm not fancy enough to own a compass or anything like that, so I find a tin, it's round, and I line up the sides and the top and make a curve. It seems obvious, doesn't it, but it took me a surprising amount of time to figure out that this is the easiest way to do it. Not ashamed. Time to reach for the old trusty jigsaw. This is not a good jigsaw and the blade is very blunt and I couldn't be bothered to go out and get more so there is a bit of burning here. However, it's nothing that can't be fixed with a quick sand. I repeat this process three more times because I'm actually making two of these shoe racks so I need a total of four side pieces. To make up for the fact that I have got the worst jigsawing skills and the shakiest of hands, I square these off, clamp them together and clamp them down and then I use a sander just to make sure that they're all kind of profiled and even. It doesn't matter too much but it's more just a peace of mind thing for me. And believe it or not, that's actually all the prep work done for this project. It's time to assemble. Now don't get me wrong, the sanding and finishing to come after. but surprisingly easy to get going with this one. This is definitely one of those projects where function beats form. This has got to look okay because it's in an entrance way but it's more important that it is sturdy. It's going to have multiple shoes put in, taken out, knocked into, dragged over. So I'm going to hold everything together with both glue and screws. Some of those screws will be visible but I'm going to be
this and glue on you shouldn't do this because it is going to clog up and make your drill bits all nasty but I'm gonna I'm gonna use that countersunk drill bit to go straight through those side pieces into that bottom piece now I'll clean the drill bits afterwards but when something's snug like this I really can't see any other way I'm sure there is but I don't know it have I mentioned before that I don't know what I'm doing The only piece left to assemble is the front piece that's actually going to stop all the shoes falling away from the wall. So I've glued it and then I'm laying it across the front. This is going to be about 5 centimeters, 50 millimeters or so from the bottom. Now I saw two reasons for this. Number one, it holds the shoes and stops them wobbling about. And number two, if I had that snug with the bottom then how are you ever going to clean all the dirt and the crud that comes off your shoes out? This way it's just about big enough to sneak your hoover head in there or a sweeping brush or something. So I just use some spacer blocks to make sure it's the same distance up and that means it's going to be square. I don't need to run a square on it as long as I'm using those spacer blocks. And this of course gets the same treatment as the rest of it, glue and screw. To be honest at this point you could call the project done. If this is going to hold some clean shoes that never leave the house, you'll be fine with this. However, this is going in a bit of a boot room, so it's going to have muddy boots in, dog walking shoes, garden shoes, whatever. So I've got to finish this and make sure it stands up to the test of time. Now the client, <coughs> mother-in-law, <coughs> has requested that I burn it. She's seen some of the other projects that I've been doing, check out the other videos on this channel, and she quite likes the look of it. So I'm going to burn and then oil. I'm not going to bother with wax this time because I don't think it needs it. So it'll just be burnt, two coats of oil, and then we're calling it done. Look, it already works. So the next day I came back through with some sandpaper and sanded it all by hand. This didn't take too long, only about 20 minutes. So I'll show you all that foot. No, I wouldn't do that to you. Took about 20 minutes, just trust me. After sanding, I come through with my map torch to burn the wood. I've found that this is quite an effective way of hiding that yellowing over time that can sometimes come with pine. In fact, it always comes with pine. And the dark tones of the burnt wood just tend to stop the rest of it looking so orange. So as you can see, the process is really simple and it brings out amazing grain features. So I run through all of this with my map torch and then just a bit of oil and we're done. So all I've done is I've brushed on some Danish oil with a paintbrush, I've left it 10-15 minutes and I'm just coming through with a clean cloth and wiping the excess off. I haven't shown you it all because it is literally as simple as that. Slather loads of it on, leave it 10 minutes, wipe the excess off and you are good to go. And this is the effect you get. I wanted to show you a bit of a close up because it almost doesn't look real how that burning accents some parts of the wood and then just leaves the rest as is. But this is the finished product. And that's a wrap guys, this project is as simple as that. Just some figures for you, this took me in total per shoe rack about two to three hours. That doesn't include the waiting around for it to dry. These things sell for about $50 on Etsy, so it costs nothing, it's a no brainer to me. Just want to say thank you for everybody that's showing support on my channel at the minute. I've had thousands of views on my recent shorts, which just blew my mind. If you've gotten anything at all out of this video, please like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me and gives me the motivation to keep going. Thank you so much.